When I first visited Poland, I remember being shocked that everything was in color. Up until then, my vision of Poland and the Shoah was in black and white. It didn't seem real and felt so distant. As I walk through five concentration camps in Poland with the birds chirping and the sun shining, everything seemed out of place. Poland was supposed to be cold and dark. During the Passover Seder, we say, Behold, door of a door. In every generation, we are obligated to see ourselves as if we were personally redeemed from Egypt. Somehow I felt the same way about the Shoah, and the summer sunshine wasn't helping me recreate this feeling. And so I returned to Poland in the middle of winter. And as crazy as this may sound, I decided to take a train to Auschwitz. But this didn't help either. Because as bitter cold as it was in the middle of February, I found myself bundled up with a heavy jacket, gloves, a hat, and scarf, and quickly realized that our ancestors didn't have such a luxury, and that I could never possibly begin to imagine what they went through. Nonetheless, I continued to visit camps to experience and learn as much as I could. A third trip to Poland and then various camps throughout Austria, the Czech Republic, and Germany. And each time I left, I did the one thing that our grandparents and great-grandparents only dreamed of. I got on a plane and flew to Israel. In fact, I visited Poland before my first trip to Israel because I wanted to fully appreciate the history of our people and the true impact of our Jewish homeland. I needed to see the past in order to fully appreciate the present. I reflected upon that first trip this week as we commemorated Yom HaShoah, which always falls one week before Yom HaAtzma'ut, Israel's Independence Day. My daughter Maytal is now in Connecticut visiting during her vacation break from the army. When I took that first flight from Warsaw to Tel Aviv, I never imagined that one day my own daughter would be serving in the IDF. To me, that is the ultimate victory. Hitler did not succeed in his goal of eliminating us and placing the Jewish people in a museum. And not only did we survive, but we are thriving. As Ricky and I bless Metal in person this Shabbat, I will be remembering the lives we lost while celebrating the life that continues to live. Shabbat Shalom.